that's just, it's, it's that side of nursing that's not um, giving shots and it's not starting IVs and it's not changing dressings and all that stuff that people think about, but it's the heart side and the mind side. It's listening and hearing what, what's needed and then making it happen. Welcome to Under the Coverage. During each episode, we interview people, sometimes it's just each other, who spend their working days focused on health benefits and health care. As consumers, we want the same thing you do. We want the entire system to be less complicated. Our guests share insights about how they navigate healthcare and the health benefit systems. I'm Jolene Myers. And I'm Sarah Flusky. And we're ready to lament, complain, empathize, and maybe help a few people. Today, we're happy to have Lorraine as our guest on the podcast. Lorraine is a nurse, and when you talk to her about anything clinical, her passion for her patients is clear. With more than a decade working in nursing and oncology settings, we've been fortunate to have her on our team for more than five years. Working in health insurance moves a nurse from the floor to a desk, but our nurses view members as patients. They're always reviewing files to identify opportunities to help people on a path to better health. Sometimes in a complicated health system, the path to better health is simply addressing the barriers that make it difficult for a member to get the care they need. Lorraine brings a great perspective as a nurse working on the administrative side of health insurance, and she just happens to have health insurance herself. Lorraine, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. We're so excited that you're joining us today. We invited you to talk about barriers to care. Let's talk about the ways nurses at an insurance company can help members address barriers. So first, how would you define a barrier to care? What does that concept mean? Absolutely. So the first ones that come to mind are things we talk about, like social determinants of health. So financial barriers, transportation is a big one that is forgotten about all over the place. Do they have access to food? Because we know that food is medicine, really. We look at safety. So are, is there an abuse or safety concern that would be a barrier to the appropriate care? Housing. So all those social determinants, many of which may be able to be helped through resources. And then there's some other ones based on where they live that may may not be able to be fixed. Uh, so when you think about community health, whether it's in a, a city, a town, what is their access to care? Is there a provider nearby? Is there a public transportation system? That sort of idea would be what we're looking at. Other barriers would be knowledge. So we think of health literacy. How much do you know? You know, you know we think personally whether it's our own or a family member or all the time, people will say, oh, you're a nurse, I have a question. And it's because their family member or themselves, maybe they're in a hospital and you know something just doesn't feel right and who's their advocate. So everyone doesn't have a nurse in their family and they shouldn't need a nurse in their family to get the appropriate care or say, hey, talk to your doctor about this, get this person to do this. So there's so many barriers, whether you're talking about an inpatient setting, outpatient setting, or just regular everyday primary care, and health and wellness. How would you explain to the average person what the role of a nurse is at an insurance company? I think that's something people don't expect, that there's nurses at insurance companies. So when a nurse is calling you from the insurance company, why are they doing that? That is such a good question because I used to be of the <laughs> of the idea that why is a nurse calling me? I'm a nurse in the doctor's office. I don't need you. I will handle my patient and don't call me again. Oh, trust me, I was naive, totally naive to it, that we could work together. So it's not just an individual member needing it, but that we work and coordinate with your provider's office because again, time, 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 time and resources. So in the office as a nurse, I thought I knew it all because I was the coordinator, I was the navigator, but I had so many patients too. So I wish I knew then how a case manager at the insurance could have helped me along and make some additional calls. In general, there's two things, two main things that nurses can do. So we've heard of utilization review. So that's the approving and, and going through the process of if someone needs a procedure or certain medications, does it meet the criteria? They're not really as member facing. They might work with providers more so. But when you're thinking that you're talking to the nurse at the insurance, it's usually a case manager, a nurse case manager. And most of them, no matter where they're at within a certain amount of years, usually two or three, they have to become certified. So they know a lot about a lot, including those, how to, how to break down the barriers, right? So community resources of how do we get them the food they need, the transportation they need. Not everyone, and I think even from being in the office and now on this side, we take for granted why people cancel appointments and why they can't get to them. 
transportation is huge. Not everybody has a family member. Not everybody drives. Not everybody, for you name whatever reason it is, and, and you're stuck thinking, do you have somebody from church? Do you have a neighbor? Or some just want to be very private and they don't have a way to get there. I can't tell you how many times that comes into play. Or now in today's culture, think about they're making priorities. I have to pay my rent or I have to pay the car payment. I can't buy food. Well, are you a diabetic? Do you have a high blood pressure? Are you a end-stage renal patient or even just a kidney disease? You have special diets. So we get some food pantries, maybe meals on wheels, but can they accommodate all that? A lot of food pantries, it's very high sodium, a lot of processed foods. So there's a lot of barriers that, you know, if you think of your primary care, they may not have the time to address that and it's not their fault, but we have the time to spend with them, really get to the heart of the issue, find the resources and get the solutions. So many times you'll get the call on a Friday, I'm out of supplies. Okay. Maybe they have an ostomy or whatever it might be. Not only is it Friday, it's a holiday weekend. And this pharmacy is saying they don't have it or they no longer have it, or maybe the authorization was denied. Okay, case manager, what can we do? You need supplies. We got to get something happening here. And that's where the magic works. I say, I always knew I, I felt like a firefighter because it's constant fires and we're putting them out and you don't know what's coming the next day. But that's just, it's, it's that side of nursing that's not giving shots and it's not starting IVs and it's not changing dressings and all that stuff that people think about, but it's the heart side and the mind side and really listening, especially on the phone. We can't even see you to assess you. So it's it's listening and hearing what, what's needed and then making it happen. I love how much empathy I'm hearing in your answers, because I think a lot of people get disheartened. You know, we talk about when you see an unknown number show up on your phone, you're not calling, you're, you're not answering that, right? Like, who is this? I'm not picking up the phone. Why should I call back? Exactly. And we know that's that's one of our barriers, you know, so we're looking to beat that down as nurses just to find more technology. Because yeah, even us, we do that. I, I don't know what number this is. It might be a risk for spam, but you should call back, especially if you just need that person who can walk you through. We're in a, a time when people just jump to the internet. They jump to Facebook and they say, here's the problem. What should I do? And everyone throws out 800 different answers and you might even get other nurses, but there are different plans. So there's different requirements around it. Or maybe it's a Medicare, a Medicaid, just another plan in general. And I can say, call your insurance number on the back of your card, ask to speak to a nurse who can walk you through because otherwise you're just getting bad information, wrong information that's frustrating you even more. And that's not the time because usually you're stressed out because it's a loved one. You know, and I, I walked through this a year and a half ago with a family member and even myself, I said, I need a case manager, but guess what? The hospital's version of a case manager is different in what they do because they have time restraints. They're focused on safety and getting the person to the next level of care. I needed somebody to do that, quote unquote, hand holding and let me make this call. Let me do this for you because you're worried that your loved one isn't going to make it. You're worried about taking time off from work. You're worried about preparing meals for the other family members that are at home. You're worried about all these things. How are you going to pay for it? How are you going to make this happen? You need someone who's able, you know what, can I make that call for you? You know what, that just doesn't make sense. Let me call back knowing what I know, because you're just going to take no, you're going to take no. That's part of being a firefighter is you can't take no for an answer because there's still a fire. We have to put it out somehow. Sometimes it's not the outcome we want or that the member wants, but we have to resolve it. I think one of the most interesting things I've learned about talking to nurses who work on the insurance side is it is not only understanding the kind of care someone might need, but sort of looking at that care through the lens of their plan. Not saying that you can't get something done or the doctor said it should be X, but the plan only includes Y, but kind of evaluating the cost of it, your ability to, to get there and have the right support around getting those things done. How that cost for that service at the end of the day might impact you financially. So kind of looking at what sort of what are your care options and then from the clinical side, but also what are your care options within the bounds of the plan and sort of looking at care to make sure that it is right outcomes, you know, best possible outcomes, but also fits for you financially. How are you going to pay for some of these things and then the follow up care and because follow up care is 
like that's a part of the process, you know, for having something done to make sure that you've got all those things that you need for you to go from illness to wellness or, you know, at least a better a better state of health. But I that's one of the most interesting things I have found is the sort of not just what do I need, but how does that fit with how my plan is structured so that I can afford to get it done? Absolutely. Steerage is, is a big thing. And and when I said earlier about people just going to the internet and looking for direction, we can't direct care here at the insurance company, but we can help steer towards things that are in network. So they might think they have to go to this top-notch facility and it may be one of the best ones, but do they know that in their plan, there's some other alternatives that perhaps even their circle of friends wouldn't have recommended. So when we talk about that being a barrier, that is one because I can't afford that copay if it's out of network, but I can afford the in-network one or even the transportation. Okay, fine. Go to that big one that's a few states away. How are you getting there? How are you paying uh, to stay there? And then the follow-up care. When it could have been provided locally, you could have had your support your support system here. Um, that's a big one. We have lots of success stories where even just uh, DME providers or pharmacies. So you think because it's local that it's going to be in, but it may not be. And now we're leveraging, especially with Nova, some other innovative ways to do that where you have some price transparency because I don't think people realize they have options and it's out there. It's it's going to be coming out more, especially in 2024. Right now it's just a rule. So not every facility is as participatory as we would like them to be as healthcare consumers, but it needs to be out there. An MRI at one place could be one price and it could be somewhere else four times as much. So we know that there are options. And I, as a consumer, I don't think you would realize. And then what do people do? I can't afford to go get an x-ray. I can't afford to go to the doctor because what if it's more and they need more testing? So they put it off. And then when they get to us, you're at a stage four or you're so far down the rabbit hole that it's going to cost so much more money. But if we went early on, we could get it at a lesser cost which brings me to my other kind of soapbox item is primary care that people don't realize the importance of having a primary care physician and young women think, oh, I'm a young woman. I see my gynecologist. I don't need a primary care provider. No, you do. You know, their focus is over here and they, you know, especially if they're in childbearing years and having kids, they just see that person often enough. And that's who's ordering things if they get sick. But no, really a primary care provider should be your hub and you should know their team in their office. You should be able to call them. And if you can't call them, we've got other innovations that you can do. And sometimes it's with telehealth. Sometimes it's with other things that you can call, be assessed over the phone and get something earlier on. That's one of those cheaper options. But if you go to the PCP, maybe that group or that provider can do an x-ray at a cheaper cost than if you went to urgent care especially not the ER if it's not needed, you know, so there, the examples never stop there. There's so many options. And uh, I always say, you know, when you get, when you start a new job and you get that insurance packet in the mail, that's like newspaper, even I, as a nurse, I toss it to the side, right? Uh, who, who reads that? But it's there. So it hurts my don't... heart, Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Will, Will and I talk about saying. that all the time. Like we're, we put so much thought into writing it. We're like, I know nobody's reading this. <laughs> <laughs> right. It gets tossed to the side because until you need to use it. Right. You yep. don't know. And so you call the insurance and sometimes people will get different answers, but they're also different. So go straight to the facts. Find this information out. Healthcare changes daily, whether it's the pricing, the locations, who's in network, what's covered, what's an exclusion. So I think it just gives us a wonderful opportunity to not be the bad guy. I've said what nurses do at an insurance company, but I think the other side of that is most consumers look at us as the bad guy. So if the insurance is calling, why? You're just calling to tell me this is denied. No, that's not it. We're calling to be an extension of your health and wellness. We work with your providers. We work with the doctors. We're not the, we're not the bad guy, I promise you. Um, these are nurses with a heart of gold who want to see people healthy and getting what they need. It pains us to see when people can't get their medications, can't get their DME, can't get their supplies. So yeah, we're, we're not the bad guys. Well, you're a gem, you're a firefighter, and we're, we're grateful to know you and, and 
that you were willing to be on the podcast. So thank you very much for all this amazing insight. Yeah. Thank you, Lorraine, for having me. It's been fun. This podcast was brought to you by Nova Healthcare Administrators. Do you have a question or a situation you'd like advice about? You can find us on Twitter at UNDR The Coverage. If you're into email, you can reach us at podcast at NovaHealthcare.com. Don't forget to leave a review, give us a like or subscribe, but more importantly, share. We'll find the insiders. You share it with the outsiders.